<laughs> we write that up. Yo, shit. I got it. Yo, 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 yo. It's the Mallory Bros Podcast, episode 108. Turn up. It's Friday. Happy Friday to everybody. Uh, we heading into this weekend. Hopefully, everybody had a safe 4th of July weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're looking at the visual podcast, we got slightly different look for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> it's jolly like the same, but trust me, if I don't switch it up, Terrell will have our shit looking like, if it ain't broke, this nigga Terrell's like Mr. Rogers. Hey, kids. Just a different fit every day. You a know different what I'm sweater. Hey, look, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That man's a legend. They made a movie after him starring Tom Hanks. Think about it. <laughs> that man had a sage ring. Had the Remember sage we used to, ring yeah, we used background? to. Y'all yeah. don't know about Mr. Uh, Rogers and the trial. We're not getting into that. This is how I wanted to start it, for real. Uh, we were thinking about shooting on the couch, but we're not going to shoot on the couch because the window that we have kind of like throws the light. One like, you know what, Terrell? That doesn't even look that bad when you think about it. Terrence, Bullshit. don't nobody give a fuck about this. No, but that's what I was going to ask you. What's your freakiest couch memory? I'm putting you on the spot right now. And watch Surreal cop out. We starting the podcast with that. What's I'm the freakiest, freakiest couch, couch memory, memory you got? You want me to go first? Not this couch. No, nah, not this. It could be any couch. I think all the fellas got a freaky couch memory, you know? I kind of lost my virginity on a couch. <laughs> so that's your freakiest memory yet? I'm, well, well, it don't have to well, be you know, man, not freaky. Freakiest. You know how niggas be like, oh, I was... Just what's the crazy... What's, what's the couch memory you got? A couch memory. Freaky couch memories. You want me to go first? I think the quickest I've ever came in my life was on a couch, and I was so embarrassed. Damn. And it was only like my second time having sex. You sat up and, and I had already came fast the first time, and then I came fast the second time, and she was pissed. Damn. But hey, I mean, I felt bad. <laughs> Terrence, I'm not saying it. What am I saying? Look, it was with Tisha. <laughs> <laughs> it was with Chanel when I was. <laughs> but, I mean, she was upset, but, and it was bad too, because let me tell you something. I had, fellas, we have all been there. I didn't know we were starting with adult shit. But uh, I came fast, and I just could not get going. No, first, I just couldn't. Yeah, after that first time, I just could not get going again. I was working with a gummy worm. I had got it going, it went down. I had got it going, it went down. Then when I finally got it going, after trying to get it going, I didn't have much energy left for that second round. So soon as you said, damn, (laughs) this is crazy. (laughs) And you tried to talk up the second round too. Yeah, like just second wait round till I get be way back. better. Because nah. you know, <laughs> you you crazy. You got that what what? <laughs> Look, my craziest memory is not crazy memory, but I just remember I was at this girl house. We was on the couch, and I was basically butt ass naked for real. But we had to cover over us. You know what I'm saying? Young days, too, trying to get my shit going. You feel me? Okay. But look, I remember her father came downstairs. And the, her, and the, look, the couch is right here. The kitchen is right there. And her father came downstairs. I've never been that <laughs> terrified in my life. I said, first off, I'm butt-ass naked. <laughs> this nigga could easily say, Terrence, get up and come over here real quick. That's what I said. I said, if I come downstairs and I see my daughter and a nigga under some covers... Fuck no, y'all getting up out of these covers. Get up. Like, nah. Did it's, not in my crib. They get up and this nigga's got a, 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 a stiff dick and no clothes on. <laughs> this nigga don't have no clothes on. And her father didn't say much. So I said, this is going to be the thing that makes this nigga snap. This nigga's going to snap this, today. But I remember feeling like, oh, shit, with the, with the cover over me. I had the cover. And we was like, we cold. Yeah, we cold. I think the nigga started inching towards us. Please go back to bed. But uh, you know what I was going to tell you though It's funny that you say most niggas lost their virginity on the couch Because I didn't I do say most, I said Well, a lot can relate A lot of people can probably relate Because look, it's rare that you get to hit shawty for your first time in her room You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember when I was with my girlfriend I think we was in like 5th grade or like 4th grade And I remember being just so young And I remember her mother let me come to her house and go upstairs to her room We was laying on the bed and I was thinking, I have no idea about anything going on. I just know adults mm-hmm. getting bids. Back at that age, I said, I know adults getting bids. But look, back, uh, back to the couch thing. You ever be laying with a joint on the couch and then you sit up and then realize, oh, yeah. It's like this realization, like, damn, this is a couch. Like, you sit up like, damn, we are on the, the mm-hmm. couch. That's a very uncomfortable. We have a trash couch for that. If you take them, co- them pillows off and put them there or put them here. 
That is a lit couch. Look at the it's not. It's look not. at the grip you got right here Damn. that you can just grip when you. You're it's tripping. Just, it's this, this couch. This couch is terrible. It's a couch that I want by Cloud. It's a. It's a. Uh, this is a fire couch right here. The couch that I want costs fourteen grand. I won't be able to get that for some years, of course. But because I just can't justify spending fourteen grand on a couch right now. But that joint is what you want. That's the joint where you. I told you you weren't gonna be able to see Mimi in a joint. You was. I'm reaching behind you. Can y'all see Mimi? Cause I give a damn about Mimi. She chilling. But Brody, that couch that I'm talking about, that's the one. That couch is that the joint. one. Oh, cause you it, lay on that amazing. motherfucker and it's like you basically lay it out. But it's dangerous because I'm the person that like to sit on the couch and watch something. You get that couch, you're falling asleep. I don't. Y'all see this coffee table right here? Coffee tables absolutely ruin couch experiences. That's my that's my thing. I think a, a side table or a little coffee table that's out in front of the couch. That's one thing, but like the way we got it, it's fuckery. I don't feel like going through the maze. No, I don't like that old getting ass. on that couch. I don't like that old ass um <laughs> joint. But we got some aesthetic upgrades we need to do. I don't like this old ass wood table. Fourth of July was this weekend, um, and or well, this past weekend. Did you do anything? Did you see any fireworks? Um, I definitely was able to see some type of fireworks, y'all. Believe it or not, I think the Fourth of July, my Fourth of July weekend was real chill. Y'all know how you keep a chill Fourth of July weekend. We ain't go nowhere crazy to see no fireworks, but I definitely saw some fireworks, and I'm I'm with the people that was talking about how them drinks was like bombs. Boom. Nah, I'm honestly. Like, oh shit. That's I was, crazy. I was gonna ask you, did you see all I at the end of the last podcast? I said, Y'all just be safe. And when you asked me about fireworks, I said, Bro, I'm just not trying to deal with the malfunctions. I have seen this week. So many crazy ass malfunctions from the uh, the fireworks. Nah, for real. I mean, did you see the joints with? I saw the joint with the, that they was in their front, front, front yard. That was crazy. I don't know. They must have accidentally lit the, just the whole box on fire. I just feel like they mass produce so much shit now that they starting to mass produce shit. Well, look now that cardboard that should be straight up in the air tips over when you yeah, like you got you, the, you got the last box and it had some crinkle on it. That motherfucker turned over and now guess who's in the r- r- front view. Or Roscoe comes out because you didn't chain him up and picks up the drink oh, yeah, and now yeah. your whole family's getting blown I be up. thinking people do that on purpose, too. I be thinking people let their dogs go on purpose. Uh, do you see Chief Keith? His shit? Uh-uh. Well, he had... Uh, they his fireworks here. went crazy, too. For real. Yeah. It looked like he set his house on fire almost. Nah, that dude's speed was streaming ahead that drink in his room. That shit was so funny, bro. That shit was hilarious. That dude's speed, he be streaming. Oh, he put his, uh, his shit in there. Yeah, he had the Pikachu drink in there. Fireworks is always a risky thing, you know what I'm saying? And I remember I was saying that I didn't like fireworks on the last podcast, but you know what? After seeing some, I'm like, you know what? For the kids, nah, for the cool. for the for the finishing off of the festivities, it's like dessert, you know what I'm saying? We do yeah. whatever, and then we watch the fireworks. Yeah. You know what else I was gonna say about Fourth uh, of July? Everybody was posting fireworks and shit, saying "fuck the fourth." It's like that's like posting your Thanksgiving plate and saying "fuck Thanksgiving." <laughs> You still participate, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck the fourth with your fireworks. Really? Yeah, people was like, if any You know time. this is the part of the celebration, right? <laughs> that is the... That's it. Like, that's like saying, Fuck Christmas. Can, opening get, opening. I gifts. know. I can see if you uh just came got a plate. Nah, yeah. But And I didn't see that many plates this week. People don't be cooking like they used to cook, mm-hmm. bro. I didn't get a whole bunch of cookout uh, invitations. My man had a cookout. I couldn't slide through that joint. But other than that, me and Thrill get our next crib. We definitely going to be the cookout guys. And I don't mean block party, flyer going up. I mean, like, the intimate yeah. short cookout. Because I said, damn, you know what? Me and Thrill could have had a dope joint with the grill, burgers and dogs. And you know what I'm saying? For those who, you know what I'm saying, Terrell don't eat red meat no more. But no, sir. We can do the chicken, hot dogs, oh, veggie I can, burgers, I can brats, down. a brat. Fire. Ooh. Oh my God. We walked past the booze in uh, DC this weekend. And shout out to everybody that we saw in DC on Sunday. Yes, sir. A lot of people showed love. We saw people from the Patreon, people that listen to the podcast, people that know us from YouTube. It was dope. Um but me man. and Trey need to pop out more like that, you know? We do. What's dope? Seeing the uh the, the Ben's chili bowl, I peeked in there, looked at that motherfucking grill. Woo. Let me get one of them. It's fucking <laughs> two of those. Because I don't eat red meat, but you know what? If I was to like have to eat a hot dog. It's not the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to say, yeah, you don't have no religious barriers or anything that you would be breaking in order to do so, you know? You know, and you know what, Brody? I'm about to stop drinking as much as 
I don't even drink a lot. But like now, every time I would go out, yeah, even if, like we would go to a restaurant, I'd be like, look, let's get drinks. But now we both been just chill. Damn yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Over this last week and a half, I done had some alcohol. You know? Yeah. We went up to that Cheddar's a couple times. Cheddar's got a. I don't know if anybody, any of y'all live like live by Cheddar's, but Cheddar's got that fucking Cheddar's Grand Shelf. Yeah, Cheddar's. They got that Grand Top Shelf Margarita joint. They give oh, you yes. that bitch in a fucking bowl. Like you get that shit in a bowl. You get love a bowl it. worth of, of alcohol. I love it. That's my favorite. I, one of my favorite places to get drinks is on the border or any Mexican food restaurant. They, they give get you that fat ass margarita glass. That's crazy to me. I was halfway through that drink and start. You ever you ever get too drunk too soon? Mm-hmm. And you like, all right, I can't even. I'm not even thinking about my food no more. Type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Both our parents celebrate their birthday this past week. My mom's birthday was Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Dad's birthday was the third, so that was like Saturday. So that's been cool. They all they traveled it with my sister, so we didn't have to do too much. But yeah, it's dope to see them get out of the uh, element. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Out Shout there out. in Cali with Kells. Shout out to dope. all of the uh, the cancers out there. Cancer season. Oh yeah, cancer season. Emotional, Emotional. motherfuckers. Hell yeah. <laughs> cancers be like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I just maybe I should just leave. Uh huh. Maybe it's fuck me, right? Maybe it's me. <laughs> I guess it's fuck me. Imagine being raised by two cancers. Woo. Yeah, we definitely had the mother say, that they say, say, you know what? And you know black people talk about this when your mom always talk about how they're going to not be here one day. Maybe y'all will be happier when I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> Slam your door. Because I didn't take the trash out. <laughs> but yeah, y'all. Hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. Hope everybody still has their limbs and hands. Because that, that shit was no joke. And I told y'all, try to tell y'all about that shit. But um, come on, Terrence. My bad. I'm just going. I mean, what you can't call, you can't talk. No, on the podcast, no. Dolo. I mean, let's get it. It's, see, I gotta nigga, run up the street. This nigga Terrence will do everything he got to do in the morning. I still have stuff to do. Terrell, why are you rushing me? Like we uh, you know, what I'm saying on a time clock. These they want longer podcasts. They want long. Yeah, Terrell. We want longer pods. Y'all want me to give y'all a story about me that when I went to the Bed Bath and Beyond? I'm gonna tell y'all. Had on the Hoochie Daddies, right? Hoochie Daddy shorts. I go in the Bed Bath & Beyond. They having an all-store meeting, right? You want me to not tell the story right now? You went in the Bed Bath & Beyond. Not Bed Bath & Beyond. The, the, uh, look, I put Bed Bath & Beyond on here. The Bath & Body Works. I always call the Bath & Body Works oh, Bed okay, Bath yeah. & Beyond. <laughs> I'll get right to okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, is it even called Bed Bath & Beyond? It is Bed Bath & Beyond, but I'm like... And then it's Bath & Body Works. It is Bath & Body Works. Yeah. I always say bed, bath, and body work. That's what I always say. <laughs> Fucking up. Fucking it up. If you don't know what the bath and body work says, it's, what you get, it's where you get the mahogany teak wood. If you don't know what mahogany teak wood is, it's a basic nigga candle. You just step your st- no, the fuck it's not. It is. You can't do that. You can't do that. It's don't shit on our candle, candle, bro. It's a basic don't, nigga no candle. No, the fuck it's not. So you where are we supposed well, to get our candle from? You might as well. I will be one of the greatest. Like that shit on your and Instagram reel. Yeah, that is a promise. Uh-huh. Go ahead and do that. And, and look, and while you're at it, make a protein shake and do some fake ass <laughs> yoga. <laughs> First Good. off, the mahogany teakwood candle, fellas, your girl will show you respect if you have that. Most niggas don't even really have dope candles. Most niggas that have candles have that one. But look, you have to go to Bath and Body Works to get that candle. Y'all niggas think it's cool to get the Target candles? And we know you just got that when you was picking up some bread and some lotion and some soap? All I'm gonna you say just is walk past a candle out or, or, or a Safeway candle or a Food Line candle? Fuck that. The Bath and Body Works, Mahogany Teakwood? I can't believe you were shit on Mahogany Teakwood. You could get fucked up for saying that in a, in a crowded area. How? Oh, why? Because all of the niggas out there will know what I'm talking about. Hey, nigga. Hey, 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 hey. We You're all got it. Hating on a Mahogany Teakwood candle is like hating on like something that we, I mean, what the fuck? Like we all use it. What the fuck? I mean, it's just like the the most basic. No, candle. it's not. There's so many other ones that you can get. All right, bet. Give us three candles you can get, and don't say no bullshit. Number one, I got that Baltic am- Amber that I fell in love with. Where that's oh, who that's by? I forget, but I forget where we got it. But I, I love the way. Can't even give us a brand recommendation. We can't also, even get the shit he got. Also it's ridiculous. Shout out to my boy. Nah, X. fuck that trail. We not doing the local local guys. Give them candle recommendations that they can go get. Not every- I, I did not say, all I'm saying is switch it up. Terrell, you're shitting And don't get candle. a mahogany teakwood candle that everybody's getting. You look like mahogany teakwood. Right. You look like your name is mahogany. You look like your name is, te- you look like your last name is teakwood, boy, or R&B singer. A weird guy, too. Okay, what you look like? Coach. <laughs> Terrell, who you look like right now? You look like a swim coach, boy. Gym, what type of Gymshark shirt is this, even though I gave it to you? 
I this gave, nigga this looks, was mine. I gave it to you. You gave it back. So too, I gave it to you. He was too scrawny. I gave it to him. This nigga looks like a swim coach. You look like you work with Phelps like shit, boy. Fried Grand on the sideline. What you look like? A freeloader. You look like a wear my hug type nigga. You got a Whitney Houston shirt. Can't name five Whitney Houston songs. Terrell, I can't name five Whitney Houston songs. Look, first, American uh, National Anthem. <laughs> yeah, the best rendition of it. <laughs> <laughs> but look. I can't believe you were hitting them all in teeth with like that. I'm not Don't say anything. It. I'm telling tell my story. Bit, I, I'm, I'm not hating on it. It's a cool candle, but it's like y'all, y'all could do something different than my hoggy teeth. Well, all of you niggas is, all you niggas might as well do the I will wait for you. Like that shit on your Instagram reel. He's a hating ass nigga, but guess what? Get the mahogany teeth with intense. Fuck his game up. Fuck his game up. And you can get the mahogany teeth with uh, hand soap. Shout out to Charlie that got me that. We understood. Bottom line, I went into the. I uh, got you some soap. <laughs> the mahogany teeth with soap. You're gonna not do that. See, I don't like that because no, you gotta like hate on what I got. No, I'm not. It's funny to uh, get somebody some soap. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you go to the bed. I went in the bed, bath, and beyond. Shit. I went in the bath and body works. Because mm-hmm. uh, I needed to just get a gift card, right? I was getting somebody a gift card from that joint. So I walk in there, and they having an all store meeting in the very front. And mind you, I went in there when I left the gym. I'm not going to act like I'm this big buff-ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? I definitely had on the shorter shorts. And, and I had on like a cut, like a stringer joint. I, I, I really oh, thought so it was, was going to be idea. a chill day in that joint. I thought I was just going to go in there. It's going to be one lady here. It's going to be, you know what I'm saying, older lady back here. Get the gift card, I'm in and out. And look, this was like the day before I needed to give that gift card away. Uh-huh. So I'm like, damn, I have to go. So I step in that joint. And honestly, I was une- I, it was me and another lady behind me. I even held the door open for the lady to come in. They literally have their entire staff there. You can tell. Like they clearly were having like an all-store meeting. And they just finished their meeting. I even stopped on the outside and was like, me and the lady were like, are y'all open? Because everybody was in the front. I walk in, it's nothing but young women in that joint. Black, different race, mainly black, you know what I'm saying? But like, I, did, I never have felt so much like a piece of meat. I mean, when I went in Target that one time, I did. But like, this was some different shit because everybody's eyes went from here to down here and then back up. You know what I'm saying? I almost felt like I needed to put my hands in front of me, you know what I mean? Like, to cover what my shit up. What did you have on? What kind of short? You had on the, the gray sweatshirt? This ass nigga's not listening. Fuck out of here. I'm not even telling you the story. If you can't, kick, if I you can't keep you, up, I heard you ask your partner daddy. to your left of you to keep you up. <laughs> and now you're that annoying nigga. What did he just say? What did he... <laughs> <laughs> I heard you had on the hoochie daddy uh, shorts. Y'all like, but you know, I don't really like saying it. I had on the hoochie daddies. But I just felt like everybody looked down at my shit. You know what I'm saying? The women. Like, I never, I felt like I went into a strip club. So look, the funny thing is the lady that came in with me, they didn't say shit to this lady. They came in and they said, hey, how you doing? The lady is standing right beside me. I said, uh, I'm, I'm doing good. They was like, what's your name? I'm about to tell 13 women my name. And you know, I don't, really, I, I don't never pr- pronounce my name that, that well. I was like Terrence. And they was like, Tez, no, Terrence. Oh, okay. Well, what were you looking for? You know how you can tell after a, a store meeting, they give you that customer service because they got, just got they on y'all, They fresh out their energy already up. Yeah. Uh-huh. So what were you looking for today? How can we help you? And I said, I'm just looking for a gift card. And I try to include the lady like y'all ask her. They don't ask her shit. <laughs> and look, they was like, uh, just a gift card? Okay, well. And the, this girl stepped up and was like, I can help you. I can help you. They was like, okay, Tiana. Help them, Tiana. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And they stayed up at the front. Look, so while she was ringing me out, great customer service, of course, offering me shit. She was looking for a gift card for a minute. You know what I mean? She kept saying, I'm going to see if I can find this one. I'm going to see if I can find that one. I'm like, just give me any. Give me the regular joint. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> she gave me the gift card. And when I left, it was all up at the front, all of them at the same time. Have a good day. Have a good one. I only bring this up to say, yo, ladies, sometimes as fellas, we be feeling a little uncomfortable too. You feel me? Man. Like I couldn't wait to get out of that bath and beyond or bath and body work. Hey, this the, Sunday. I wanted to look at the teak wood. I wanted to look at the hand soap and shit. But I said, let me get the fuck out of this joint. <laughs> now y'all can help this lady. Oh shit! Did you need help, ma'am? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's how I felt on Sunday, man. We was in D.C. 
And most of my friend group is in relationships. Most of us. Which was a horrible experience. Which was a horrible. That was a horrible experience. It was horrible. Number one, the one thing you can look forward to in going to brunch is the food being good and you getting a full stomach at least. Mimosa, whatever. My food was terrible. It took forever. It took an hour and 30 minutes to come. It was terrible. The fries, even the fries. You had them fries? Terrell, don't ask me because you know my food was bomb, dog. My food was bomb. I had you the, like fries the fries? Shrimp. Yes. First off, my fries came out second. So we was great. I, I ordered a second. Food came out second. And the fried shrimp I had, woo, I was watching Terrell down there struggle. The fries taste like when you eat. The fries taste like when you got grease at home that your mother done cooked 30 batches of chicken in and you make some fries. It you was just. Shrimp and them joints was bomb. It was just too greasy. It was too much. Man, I'm known to get some fried shrimp and fries. Hey, oh, look, this local. Friday shrimp. Go to Friday's, get the Friday shrimp. That fried shrimp. Shit, boss. Terrence eats like a 12 year old. No, I do not. I eat, my, I eat for my preference. Well, I don't let anybody shit on you. I'm not going to, I don't have to get, I don't have to get pasta. So you got a chicken Alfred. Terrell got a uh, Cajun chicken pasta that I got she a recommended. Cajun salmon and shrimp pasta. Terrell, you got a Cajun pasta that she recommended. Who's really the kid? At least I have my own preference. Fried Your shrimp? own preference is strips and fries? So you're not about to put that on my name. You're not about to put that on my name. I get just as many diverse foods as you. Don't let people who want to get diverse foods try to shit on you for wanting to get, even if you get the chicken strips and fries. Did your black ass grow up on chicken strips and chicken nuggets or did you grow up on, on creme brulee? That's a dessert versus food. Right. Did you, grow up on, did you grow up on Cajun pasta? No. Your black ass had chicken strips and fries, but since we old, we're not supposed to like that no more. I'm with all my fellas, all my ladies out there, because a lot of ladies, the chicken strips and fries, you go to Cheddar's, we nah, get the chicken get the, strips and the fried shrimp. That Friday's chicken and chicken strips and fries was fine. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, but you just said I didn't have immaculate taste. Only because Fuck of God. But Terrence, that. all right, well, let's talk about that. The honey mustard dictates whether the whole meal is good. That's false. I can eat chicken strips and fries with no sauce. That's or just the, the type of nigga that I am. But you're you right. You are a menace. I can eat nuggets. I can get nuggets from Chick-fil-A. I can get a, anything from chicken. I don't need, I'm not a sauce type dude. I don't need sauce for I, my... I, can, I get sauce, but I don't need it. But chicken strips, like Friday's chicken strips, you don't need sauce. You tripping. I, I don't need sauce, but yeah, I want sauce, of course. No, nah, you sauce. said... He said... I don't need sauce. You don't. You can eat it without. <laughs> I can't eat without. And you look like the nigga that's in the back whipping it up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get to the... <laughs> this nigga making 30 different meals back there. Hey, but look, Sunday, let me tell you. The food wasn't good, and since we was all wiped up, man, it was like motherfucking. I've never been in a situation like that where I have to shoe off so many women. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that it was women jumping at, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just that nigga in the street. But you got to think about it. The gays was out, so the women knew where to find a group of straight, the straight niggas at. You know what I'm saying? When not you walk yet. through, and you know how people sit on the outside, and the, the restaurant over here, so you got to just like walk through. Man. Hey, look, the whole cat calling thing. Yeah. Women yeah. definitely not shy at all. They, yeah. Like I said, we be feeling like some pieces of me sometimes. The women out here was aggressive. I was trying to have a little bit more fun that day, but you know how it is, fellas. You, you know gotta keep I, your wits. You know what I did want to say? What? Ladies, y'all not good at the y'all twins thing. Nah, yeah, that's old. I now. can see that coming a mile away. I know what you're doing. You just try and use this shit as a. You could tell that. You could tell y'all ain't used to the whole. You gotta go smack. You gotta. Oh, you got. You gotta shoot your shot. Yeah. That girl was like, Oh my God! Oh my God! <laughs> Hold up! He. Is that your brother? Like, but like. Yes. We are twins. But it's almost like somebody asked. We've been heard, me and Tred have heard that question for years though. So I can spot the, so I can, can spot, spot it, yeah. I can spot a legit, somebody that's legit, oh shit. Yeah. There's somebody that's just. Me and Tred go to the gym together. Game. It's just like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I yeah. can see when niggas are like, hold up. Some people chill with it. Like this dude that I met in the gym the other day, he was like, he just literally came up to me off the real, off the humble tip. He was like, hey bro. He said, you got a brother? That's him over there? All right, bet. I was just making sure I wasn't tripping. That to me is like, not that that's preferred, because I really don't care. I mean, I get it. You know, twins is a thing, it's whatever. But you got some people who are jaw like embarrassed to 
be confused. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got to hear the story. It's, oh, y'all twins? Oh, damn. See, because you know what I'm saying? When I came in the first time, I said, hold on, who is he? And I look back in, I said, hold up. Is that the same person? And look. Yeah. And they get a kick I've out. Get, I've, got, I've heard it so many times that it's like, all right, uh -huh. that. You know what I'm saying? People don't know that being a twin is living a devil life. There's people that come to me and be like, what's good, brother? Yeah, it's good to see you again. And I've never seen them in my life. 100. 100. That's me too. I just stay on code, though. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I see Terrence, I'll be like, yo. Or if I meet somebody, let's say I meet an Asian dude in a Walgreens. We, me and Terrence always look. Let's say we always went to a Walgreens. I meet an Asian dude. I would come home and tell Terrence, hey, we now know him. Yeah, it's a weird twin thing. It's we weird. now know this Asian dude at the Walgreens. That way, when I see him, I'm like, yo, what up? Even now, when I meet people, I'm like, yo, I got a twin that also comes to this gym, too. So, you know what I'm saying? If you see him, I got to introduce myself and Terrell. That's a fact. I also meet people that you can tell, you say, hey, what's up, brother? And they look at you like, like the why don't he know me yeah. look? <laughs> Just talked about the Nationals last week. Speaking One of, of them watches WNBA. <laughs> That's that me. Easy. That's me. Shout out to the WNBA, man. The W. We growing. I'm saying we because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm aligning myself with it, you know? Some people say, oh, he hasn't been watching it for, for years. I don't give a damn. I don't care. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big WNBA advocate last night. Last night, I watched my Mystics play. Easy, easy W over Atlanta. Beat their ass by almost 20. You've been supporting the again. WNBA, honestly, I would say for a long time. You didn't, we bought this it. 2019 when we won. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, favorite player, Natasha Cloud, Cloud9. We know what it is. But I got other favorite players. I'm not going to get into that. But, uh, yeah, shout out to the WNBA, man. Might as well touch on the Britney Griner situation. Yeah, while we sure. got it. Um, last I heard, she had played guilty. And we didn't know whatever, but she was still trying to figure that out. We yeah. definitely want her back. Joe Biden finally said something about doing something for her. If you don't know about Brittany Griner, she got caught um, in, where is that? Russia. In Russia with. She had some marijuana, a, like, a, cartridges a, for, like, yeah, the like vape. A, for the, yeah. And apparently those was illegal. She, facing up to, she could face up to 10. Damn, is that me? Yeah. She could face up to 10 years in prison for that, which is crazy because she just pled guilty. So I'm like, damn, I'm hoping she's not about to have to face no time out there for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Imagine if. Twinkies was illegal in, well, not, I can't say Twinkies, but you know how over here we've legalized a lot of shit you could travel with. Yeah. You go to Russia, they don't have the same law. So it's one of those situations where wrong place, wrong time, for real, for real. Yeah. And for, you really got to, yeah. You really got to, I would say it's kind of a lesson to, like, you got to know what, these other countries are what's illegal and what's legal. Yeah, for sure. They were talking about how certain places in certain countries where you can't even curse. You can't curse. You can't act a fool. You know what I'm saying? They don't take lightly to certain things that we take lightly to. And that's definitely one of them. So, well, I mean, we trying to get it back because we all know it's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? We know that that's bullshit. So, free Britney Griner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Until we say that shit backwards. Yeah, and it's been way too long, honestly. I mean, I get it, other countries, because everybody said there were a lot of people that said, well, it's not as simple as it's just this or it's just that, because some countries, it's illegal. But for something like this, she should definitely be home. Not I did, sure. did want to read what the lady, what, what, um, you see what her coach said about LeBron? If this was LeBron James, he'd be home. And then uh, I was going to read this take. It says he wouldn't. But LeBron would never be in this position because LeBron isn't forced to go to a hostile country and play ball in their leagues for extra income. Brittany makes $220,000 a year, and Bron makes $41 million. That's the real angle that nobody wants to discuss. Let's discuss that angle. Yeah. Um, I think it's really, like, I, gender pay, you know, equality. Like, that's a, that is something in of itself. I don't think that's the case when it comes to the, the professional basketball leagues. And the reason why I say that is because LeBron James makes $41 million a year because that is how important he is to the state of California in terms of the basketball division. You know what I'm saying? Like the look up what the NBA nets from California from, Los Ange from the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, he's one of five that got to get on that, on that court. Like, yeah. 
it's the biggest sport. The backing from all major entities in the world back the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Like it's one of it is of the most popular, most watched sports. Yeah. The WNBA, let's just keep it a hundred, y'all. Especially the ladies that's making this argument. Y'all don't watch it. Y'all don't support the WNBA. Y'all expect the men to support the WNBA. But it's just not the same level basketball. Yeah. It's really not. So unless you like a you love the game, a lot of people that watch WNBA just love the game. They love the game of basketball. They can watch anybody play. Her league pays her what they can afford to pay her because of the support that it has. Yeah, and I was going to say, I watch, I'm definitely somebody that watches the WNBA, not because I'm trying to see the most spectacular, uh, a spectacular sporting performance or anything like that. I'm watching for the sheer, not love of the game, but I always say I watch for the competition aspect of it. I'm watching because... You know, I like to see the ladies get out there and ball out and play. And believe it or not, the games are intense. If you watch Sabrina Ionescu last night put up the first triple-double in WNBA history uh, with 30 points, uh, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. That's the first triple-double. I'm sorry, the first 30-point triple-double. And it was just dope to see. It's like we're watching this game mm-hmm. kind of trans- transcend. I think one day we will see more people watching the WNBA. And you got to keep in mind, the WNBA is not – that old the WNBA has only been around for like 26 years you know what I'm saying as to where we just celebrated the 75th anniversary of the NBA I always think about it like if a man comes out with a makeup line right for men you know we can't say oh see Matt got all of these millions but this man makeup brand they only got this much and it's like, okay, well, Mac also has millions of women who buy their makeup. And the men, even though they should be supporting this male line, they don't watch. It's a, you can make, make an argument that women watch more NBA than WNBA. And that's probably going to be a fact, you know? Mm-hmm. This had, I would never shit on that league, the WNBA. I only could understand the circumstances, though. I, I do think to say, if this was LeBron, he'd be free. I yeah. think that yeah. is a, I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? I it can agree with that. I'll agree that LeBron will oh, be free. I, I do agree. But I, I feel like trying to make it seem like Brittany Griner is less important than LeBron, it's like, come on. Yeah. It's like, we know what LeBron does and what league he's in versus her. And I don't think that this means, I don't think that, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know what? I'm going to agree with that. If it was LeBron, I think he would be free. He would be free. I mean, I LeBron, it would get more attention. Because we know that the WNBA doesn't get as much attention. And we sure. just now, I felt like, turning that, cr- that, that corner and getting yeah. more attention on it. And when, when you start, when you think about the politics behind it, like what goes into that person and yeah. what they're worth, you would have the governor of California. The, the Los Angeles Lakers made $320 million for the state of California last year. In a year where they were trash, there's there, it, it, the level of importance is just a little bit different. Yeah, LeBron is also you can't bring somebody like LeBron. In. You should have used a different player. Yeah, I mean, is it fucked up? Yeah, like even like people use the ASAP Rocky situation. Then nobody give a fuck about ASAP Rocky like that. That year he went over there, he wasn't like on top of the game, right? But Trump found a way to get him home because they said he like what they say he did. They say he like threatened like a trade war or some shit. Yeah, and then people were saying if it was Trump, this is my response. A lot of people were telling me that if it was Trump, regardless of what y'all want to say, he'd be home. I felt like, uh, I just don't think that, I mean, yeah, but I don't think that Trump would be hard-pressed to get her out just because, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think we all know the real reason why he got ASAP, Re- ASAP Rocky at home. And it's not because ASAP Rocky was a proud American, you know? I think that was a a little bit of a... Not a handout, but you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do this so that I look this way to this group of people, even though I really don't give a fuck about them. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, yeah, maybe he would get Brittany Griner out of jail as a bullshit way to show fake support. You know what I mean? Well, some people like people was like, oh, no, supp- no politician really is going to give a fuck. And it's like, but that's okay. the thing. That's the thing, too. People were saying that even if he did do that as a fake ass gesture, She'd be home. She might be home. Yeah. Biden drags his feet on everything, and he's pussy. 
Yeah, and I'm in no way defending Biden. Fuck him. No, right. You're right. But and then also I was gonna say like Brittany Reiner isn't really the LeBron of the WNBA. She's very fam- I think she's famous, and she has a big name because Brittany Griner has done some dope things. I don't think that Brittany you can call her the LeBron though. If this was Diana Taurasi and not Brittany Griner, I think Diana Taurasi would be home. Because I think well, Di- I don't think that I think you could say the same. I think you can replace LeBron and put Diana Taurasi there. Because I felt like that's the real LeBron. Oh, that should the, be the one that could be should be compared. Only because that is like low-key a face. Like every woman playing in a W right now is going to say, yo, Brittany Griner. You know, I'm not, I'm sorry, not Brittany Griner. Yo, Diana Taurasi, for sure. Uh, for me, I think if it was EDD, El, uh, Elena Deladon, she's to me a, a go. So, but why do you say that, though? You're saying like if they were over there, they would be home and Brittany... Brittany not that, not, I just think their names, even though Brittany Griner is, is popular within the W now, I think their names have been in the league for a minute. You know what I'm saying? They got skin in the game. That's why I say, Loki, what if he said, if she said this was John Morant? All right, bet. Oh, you're you know, talking about the coach. The coach, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about basically like the coach using LeBron as a reference oh, instead okay, of using yeah. like maybe like a D book. Uh, like LeBron is the NBA. Of course he would be home. Yeah. But I can't say that Brittany Griner is the W, you know? Yeah, that's true. But definitely free, free Brittany Griner until, that, until we say that shit backwards. For sure. But without a doubt, it, it, it's no ifs, ands, or buts that she needs to be home. For sure. So, free her. Shout out Brittany Griner, man. That Phoenix Mercury team going through some shit. Terrence, trust me, I don't give a damn. Terrence, I don't give a fuck if you give a damn. What do you give a damn about? Bum-ass Broncos? Lame ass bottom of the division ass team. We about to be the fuck out of here. We about to be the most the wealthiest team in the league. Who cares? You, about? Who cares if you don't give a fuck? I do. You think I'm telling you because I think you give a fuck or not? Phoenix Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finding the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Rihanna is the youngest self made self made billionaire. One point four billion dollars from Forbes this year. I thought that was already. Well, she's the youngest. Well, now, now, this year, yeah, for well, for like based on last year, at one point four billion dollars. Not like you know, Kylie when Kylie did it, hers was like one point something a little lower than that. Okay, so, Rihanna got the crown for the youngest billionaire for what for how much was she? Damn, made. so she got more. Hold on, wait. Her base. It wouldn't her, be Kylie no more. No, well, for this year. Oh, for this year. Okay, turn up, man. Navy. What was and the first I, thing you would buy if you had a billion dollars? Um, Billy. First thing you would buy. First thing I would buy if I had a billion dollars, number one, I was like, well, look, I would put half of it in a Roth IRA. I was about to say, <laughs> niggas going to get on you before what you say. I would invest $300 million of it. Um, but if I, had a, if I had a billion dollars, I don't know, I, I would duck off somewhere. I'm Get me a... Uh, if I had a billion, I'm spending my I'm money. Getting I'm getting me a Bruce Wayne. I'm getting me a Bruce Wayne mansion somewhere, ducked off, that I can get an underground garage... That's away. the first thing you would get? I would duck off. You know what the first thing I would get? Well, first thing I would do, I'm paying all my bills off. All of them. Paying yeah. it down. Because, like, I'm keeping my, I'm keeping the vehicle that I have now. I'm keeping that. There's no way. Look, not hey, that I wouldn't get, get another one. Out of here. Not that I wouldn't get another one. You're going to trade that but I wouldn't. I, I have a relationship with this before the money, you know? I need to keep this joint in the garage. Maybe just have it. You know, I would get I would get some nice stuff for it and then just always have it as this is my baby right here. Terrell, you know what? I'm not fucking under, with this name. No, I understand that. If you want to have your... So, you, you wanna, look, you would get rid of your ride now? One thousand. I would get rid of my car right now. Look. It, I, what's the difference between me and you? Fuck out of here. If I, would, I would never do my car like that. I love my car. Y'all hear how you talking about his whip? I love I my car too, my but like I, the one that I want, I want that motherfucking CLS. I want a CLS 450. Or if I can really, if I really step it up and get S class and, 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 and go S and give me an S560 or a Maybach, shit. If I'm a billionaire, you think I'm going to be riding around in the cheat joint? Like I said, for me, it's not about what I look like. See what you're saying? You're talking about? This nigga's thinking about his image. The only thing that only, I am. I'm uh, thinking legacy, 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 legacy. Black excellence. We're going we to let him see. We let Jay Z get some shit. Yeah. But, uh, nah, we really did. No, nah, we do. I was gonna say we let Beyonce get some shit off too. All right, let's leave her out of it. When she said, uh, "What was that line that we brought up where Beyonce said, I... don't worry about it, it's fine.'" 
hot sauce something like what well, I got hot sauce in my bag swag. I See, got yeah, hot sauce in my bag swag. It's, it's nobody probably, else is getting that off. Remember what she said? My persuasion can build a nation. Yeah. On uh, who run the world, girls? Yeah, we didn't let that get off. We, Hil- we, that, 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 that's not not that's Hillary not a- Hillary Clinton's ass. What did she do when she went to the Breakfast Club? Hot sauce. That has nothing to do she with was persuasion. Trying to run build the country. <laughs> no bullshit. Look how she looked. Dumb and shit. Y'all didn't like that. No bullshit. She thought she was about to go up there and win. Got her ass whooped. You take the biggest L for losing to Trump. Yeah, but low key, <laughs> how we know them? Look, Trump people wanted to say that the Biden election was rigged. How we know y'all election wasn't rigged? Because Hillary had them votes. Do you know they say something about the Republican Party has not won a popular vote in like in, twenty in like years. 30 years, like once or twice in like thirty years? Them motherfuckers went off the electoral party, the electoral card, co- the they electoral They went college. by law every fucking time. <laughs> well, you know, basically, if he wins Texas, it's twenty three. We there. won because of the way the law is set up. Yeah, and you know what, Brody? That's like one of the things. Shout out to that the the. Uh, the black girl that started the whole what's a scam or what's something that's not a scam or what's something that is a scam now. Okay, yeah. What's and then people start a- talking about what that's one of them things. The whole electoral that shit is a scam. Yeah, that's bullshit. This bullshit. state has more people, but this little state, Maine, has 13 electoral vo- votes, but fucking Florida, you know what I'm saying, or Texas or one of the bigger states has six. It's like, never the case, right. but yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know what though? you mean. Yeah. Like New York, like New Hampshire. Some of these states, they- That are smaller. They go crazy. But they carry weight. Yeah. I just think it's stupid. I think it should be vote for vote, person by person. But that's what I think. I don't think, I feel like, if, what is the point of everybody voting? Look, your vote matters. But my state has three electoral fucking votes. Three. Oh, yeah, for sure. You don't want to know how I feel about black folks and voting. True. Sure, how you say three in Spanish? Tres. Wrong. It's trace. Let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, but the reason why I brought up uh, Rihanna is because I just wanted to like just make it real clear that influence is making people billionaires more than ever. We saw it with Jay-Z um, and, of course, the right investments. But at the end of the day, it all starts with like these people's influence, like more than ever, we're starting to see people that started their careers on social media yeah. or in reality TV become billionaires. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, Kim K and Kylie both hitting a billy? Yeah. When you look at where they, or what they were doing, yeah, did they, they were born into money for sure. Rihanna is probably one of the most grassroots. J, Rihanna, real Jay-Z, billionaire. yay. Yeah. Are some of the more grassroots stories than the, the Kardashians who came from money. But at the same time, they're not billionaires because of that money. They're billionaires because of how they took advantage of the spotlight they had from TV, social media, whatever it was. Jay-Z was in the spotlight, whatever. He used his influence to make more money. And then when he made more money, he made the right investments. Now think about it. Nobody knew Rihanna was going to go into fucking uh, clothing and... Beauty. Yeah. She started like everybody else. If it's something that you want. Baby. You you me, young girl. Yeah, that shit was fire. Young girl. <laughs> if it's something that you need. I'll be that, right here. That's what fire she... Fire track right it there. Is. It's fire. She, but she started then. Who knew that you was going to be a billionaire? Right. I don't know. And the, and the only reason why I say that is because a lot of people out there have a lot of followers or are working on their following. And I'm not saying you could be a billionaire, but shit, you could change your life. If you work in a job where you're making like $20 an hour and you're making like 40 something thousand a year, you could become a thousandaire from your influence. That's 100. You start the right thing. For my people out there that's grinding to get that degree, you know what I'm saying? You might not even need to get that joint. A lot of people are grinding to get a degree with hopes that that degree will secure them a job that's going to make you 70 racks a year. You know what I'm saying? And that's not even... The and you're going to pay 35 racks to get your degree and be paying a fraction of that back. So when you really start making your 75, 85, 95, you're paying back 30. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So low key, you could definitely take this something else and, you know what I'm saying, turn it up. But as long as y'all know it's more options, that's the truth. Thing. That's, some, that's the truth about getting a degree. A lot of people think that you got to get a degree. And a lot of people's parents think that you got to hurry up and get your degree my dad still tells my sister, you need to take that degree and 
Sometimes it's like, you know what? You're old. And you still thinking in that old way. Yeah, you think you can still get in with this. You still you can't even get in with that shit. I walk people out of Best Buy's that had degrees that they were overqualified as hell for the job to even work here. And you still not getting the job with me because you an asshole. And that means more to us than your fucking degrees. Yeah, fuck your degrees for real. It really it matters who you are. When we was in film school, they taught us, that was one of the first things they taught us, remember? It yeah. don't matter what you have... How many films you think you might have worked on or what you know? If you're an asshole, you're not going to stay on this set. You won't, yeah. Like, if you're not you're a good person to work with, you're not getting on this set. Period. Another thing me and Terrell learned on that set I always bring up is it wasn't no sensitivity. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was, hey, let's fucking get this shit straight. Hey, can we stop fucking off? Yeah. We, 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 we had dogs. You know what I'm saying? And it, we nobody was in their feelings. These days... I swear to God, motherfuckers are, pre- you know what I'm saying, calling HR. I don't like the way I'm talked to. Man, I'm telling you. But I'm that's why I coach him up. When you came up like that, guess what? You became a lot, you became an asset to whoever you work for. Yeah. Because they said, this motherfucker, I could, he's a dog, he's an animal. Yeah, because look, we were talking about uh, the Kyler Murray situation where his hairstylist was like, that she asked him, she, she, he asked her to wear pants when she came over. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'll wear whatever I want. I'll wear whatever I want. If you can't control yourself, if you can't, it's like, cool, cool, cool. I get exactly what you're saying. You're just not going to be my hairstylist. And it's not that Kyla Murray was right in telling her to put clothes on because, yeah, nobody should tell anybody what to wear. But me and Terrell cut from that cloth of, hey, if everybody's going to work here, everybody has to wear white every day. If you want to work, you're going to wear white. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Otherwise, Cause look, it's fine. You can wear yeah, what you want. You can wear whatever you yeah, want. Just won't work. Yeah. You just won't work. You just won't work here. And my thing What's is this: fact? Yeah, you got all your pride. You stood tall, but also now you are like, whose stylist are you now? You know? Right. Oh, I work for this person. This person. This person. All right, cool. But I don't think like me and Terrell kind of went back and forth on that because I ain't think that. I don't think that him saying, "Yo, you wearing pants." I mean, you wearing shorts might make my lady a little uncomfortable. So I just appreciate if you can wear pants when you do my hair. If you don't fuck with that or you don't give a fuck, cool. I'm going to go find somebody else who will make my lady comfortable. Because, look, is my lady doing too much? Probably. But I'm not living my life to make you as my hairstylist comfortable. I'm just trying to get my hair done. But I gotta, I'm gotta. i married. This is my wife. You know what I'm saying? So no, I understand whether she that. looking at this, uh, uh, whether you think she doing too much or whatever, hey, I'm just trying to make it comfortable for everybody. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I, I should be able to wear whatever the fuck I want. I should be able to the fuck I want. I'm a, I'm a grown ass yeah, woman. If you can't, all right, yeah, but, cool. But like low key, I'm just gonna get somebody else. And now look, but, but you making it worth it, losing your opportunity? You're making Kyla seem like this cool guy, and her being you're giving her the angry trope when really Kyla was the asshole. And ever I've heard that Kyla Murray is a short, angry asshole, short man. All I'm gonna say is we heard from her on a podcast of you talking shit in the same way I'm talking. Mm-hmm. And we haven't heard from Kyle. You just heard he was an asshole from her I'm not gonna podcast. Build, but I'm not about to just make just it seem like, like you, know? Kyle, you, of course, maybe have had that energy. But she was saying from the beginning, Kyle was an asshole. And he was talking shit. I just don't fuck hey, with look, none of these other teams. Let's go. All I'm going to say is Wait, this. Let's, let's start the season. Sometimes your opportunity bigger than your pride. Nah, that's true. That's a fact. That's right true there. because, honestly, now nah, that's true. And, honestly, we have been through that, too. We've been through some situations where it's like, all right, this person could be being disrespectful, but this opportunity is about yeah. to put me. A lot of people go through that. But like you also saying, and on the flip side of that, or maybe you're not saying, but on the flip side of that, some stuff ain't worth you're right. the lashing that you get. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Fuck it. You could get that same eye view. If you got in this door, if Kyler Murray is calling you, another nigga will call you. Another NFL player will call you because it's a reason why he called. That is always how I looked at you. That's why people take these deals. I feel like that's how Monique looked at stuff, too. Yeah, but... And, well, you, you see, see what I'm saying? In her situation... I know it's she, a little different, but you know... No, nah, because you're right. She did look at it that way, and she was right. But she just kept fucking up. You're going to run your well drive. Monique is an example of somebody who... You just have... Now it's too many people against you for us to say everybody is wrong. And that's my thing. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather put up with bullshit until the next opportunity. Like, if, if Kyler Murray would have told 
her put you you need to wear pants and she didn't fuck with that i think i would wear pants all the way up until where i didn't need this opportunity then i'm just y'all i'm gonna respectfully leave you know what right. i'm saying if your job says yo y'all gotta uh, think about it i remember our job said we gotta tuck our shirts in right and i was like y'all really don't want to tuck my shirt in but who am i to say man fuck that i don't want to be controlled i want to be able to do whatever the fuck i want to do i'm leaving we're gonna get another motherfucker that's gonna be right yeah, in your he position that doesn't here mind tucking weeks. his shirt in. Yep. He's gonna be getting your money, and now you trying to make a case for why you left. And look, does that make you look like you easy to work with? How'd it work out for Monique? Oh, I left them because they were trying to control me. As somebody mm -hmm. who's looking to hire you, it's like And it's concrete too. What if she find us telling her some shit to And that's the thing. It's that's, a shaky slope. Yep. Yeah. And that's the thing I wanted to say. It's it's not just accusation, it's concrete. We yeah. have example example here. We have example here where there's concrete evidence that there's friction, 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 friction. It's not just an accusation. Because, you know, people will try to say, oh, well, you didn't. People don't like the, the, the stance that I took on Deshaun Watson. Yeah. And you see how that's starting to unfold. But I just big on, all right, bet if it's proof, it's proof. Yeah. Especially when the man is black or the woman is black. Because I've it just in the words of what's his name? Do the history. Deontay Wilder, who you're not a fan of. I love Deontay Wilder. So that's bullshit. Whenever Deontay Wilder fight, you root against him the same way he roots against Javante Tank Davis. Terrence, I root against niggas that you hype up. I don't, I don't mean that I'm like just him. a fan. <laughs> Terrence, no, you was hyping up the, the you was hyping up Deontay Wilder. Then when he went up against Fury. I said, he can lose to this dude. See, Terrell like to see. <laughs> see? He not and a let fan. me tell you something about Javante. Javante got to fight somebody that hasn't just fought 14 fights. You fight who they put in front of you. The dude Roley was talking big shit, but we knew he wasn't going to beat Javante. He fought 14 times. Terrell's not telling you, though. Mid-fight, Terrell's like, oh, It wasn't oh, looking oh. good. Roley was winning on paper. This man, Roley, definitely was out that joint. Look. Bing, bing. That Bing. nigga was diesel as shit, too, ready to hit this nigga. And was tagging your man up. Javante was getting his ass whooped that fight before before he hit through that uppercut. No, he wasn't. I had called oh, he you. he talking about against uh, Mario Santa Cruz. I called you and was like, your man is not looking good. He's like, boop, 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 boop. Man's ready to do the same thing every time. Javante, Javante ended up knocking a nigga out. And I'm like, what? Javante don't beat niggas' asses in fights. He survives fights with a heavy punch. <laughs> look. Hey, look. Just to segue from what you said about black man and truth, I think that's a perfect segue into the Jalen Walker situation. This past week, I think it was either maybe a week or a week or two ago, there was a young man, 25 years old. His name was Jalen Walker. Uh, he was um, pulled over for a traffic violation in Ohio. Um, ended up fleeing. Ended up, you know what I'm saying, taking off, mm -hmm. which isn't good, of course. Um, people do it every day. People do it every day, yeah. Mm -hmm. He ended up getting to a point where he hopped out of the car and and fleed on foot. Officers was trying to tase him. Tasers weren't working. Um, they believed he was armed. And there was a belief that he shot a, a bullet out of his window during the chase. So when he got out and fled on foot, they thought that he was armed. So, you know what I'm saying? It was, what, it was the story that we've been given. But what's crazy is what happens is while running on foot, they are saying that he turned and reached for his waist, to which he was then met with 60 bullets, 90 shot, 90 rounds fired. He was met with 60 bullets. The, the reason why this story has made national news and has spent the block the way it has is because of the body cam footage coming out and mm -hmm. literally seeing the obvious overkill. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think the reason why you see a lot of people upset is because of the excessive force aspect of it. Nobody is saying that anyone that's fleeing cops should be, you know, we're not, nobody's saying that that's not a bad thing. Nobody's saying it that, it, but it's not worth dying. Nope. People flee and run from the cops. We have family that fled from the cops and on foot and ran from cops. And that's what I'm saying. Like, like that's it, doesn't, what, it doesn't warrant you dying. That's exactly what I was getting to. Y'all see how Terrell be beating me to certain points? I was getting there. 
Nah, you was getting ready to say nobody's saying it like we say it like that's a that's something that Nah, see, I was gonna get, go exactly where you was going. I was gonna say nobody's gonna say that that wasn't uh un you know what I'm saying that nobody's saying that that was a good thing to do, but nobody deserves to die from that is where I was going with it. But oh look, I'm used to you now. <laughs> but the main thing that I don't like is it's crazy to see us die. And then you see so many people trying to justify, and we're not here to tell our side of the story. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the holes in the story come from them saying that there was a muzzle flash. There was a, apparently there's a photo, there's video, I've seen both, and they say that there's a muzzle flash that came from his car window. So he shot out of a car, and that's what made them believe that he was armed when they, when they chased him down and shot him down like that. My only issue with that is, I mean, to me, it just doesn't make sense. Who in their right mind? Because I think about common sense. If I'm running from the feds, right? Because there was a gun found in his car. If I'm running from the feds, the, the question that I have is, why would I shoot a single bullet out my win window? One single bullet out of the driver's side window. I'm leading cops going this way. You feel me? Mm -hmm. uh, it's not no buzzle flare that came out of the back. It's not no gun reaching out of the back. There is a supposed, and it looks, like a, it looks like a light, like a shadow, like he drove past a street light for real. But they're like, oh, we saw a muzzle flash come out of the side of, the, of his window. So who was he shooting at? Y'all? You know what I'm saying? And it was one muzzle flash, so one bullet. Mind yeah. you, he's shot, and, and he's shot by 13 officers. My only thing is like, damn, if I was him and got out, not saying that I would, I would do anything like this, but like, damn, it's 13 motherfuckers behind me. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? When they say that he turned and reached for his waist, this is to me just like the Mike Brown situation. But they say Mike Brown charged the cop car or he charged the car. Black people, we are not known for that. Mm. That, is not a, that is not something that happens. It's 13 officers behind me, so I'm going to reach for my gun and turn around. Or I'm going to reach for my waist and turn around to kill y'all. They were saying, like, what if he was turning around to give himself up? Regardless of what y'all want to say, let's say he did have a gun. Let's say he did turn around and make a gesture, right? I'd be on Facebook all the time. I see, and I don't know if you know this, there are mad videos on Facebook of police shootouts with people and in most of those videos, the police will shoot people and literally they take those people to the hospital and then those people are charged and put in jail. They always say this person was taken to this, part, this uh, hospital for his injuries. To see the video of this man being shot 60 times, bro, easily he got 40 shots while just laying on the ground. It's like it was no, it's no way that he was a threat. You know what I'm saying? Even if you thought he had a gun, did you think he was going to Navy SEAL? Did you think he was doing a drop shot like on some Call of Duty shit, laid down to shoot? It's like you can even see officers get there, and while he's already being shot, they take their gun out and start shooting like, like a join the party thing. I just feel like it's bullshit. The, the, the upset and the protest, I think, that you're seeing from everybody is because of the excessive force. It's like they slaughtered this dude. Yeah. And this, he was unarmed on the ground. He didn't right. have his gun on the ground. Did you see the picture of the gun in his car? The picture of the gun in his car, the gun is placed perfectly with the extra clip to his gun right in the seat with his ring, his wedding ring right next to it. Now, they say that his fiance passed away. So you got a lot of people saying, oh, this was an obvious suicide by cop because he left his wedding ring. I just don't believe the bullshit. If you look at the gun, there's the gun, the clip, the wedding ring, perfectly in the front seat. Meanwhile, we see the clip of this man jump out of the car and flee on foot. We when the fuck did he have time to perfectly place his gun there? Or was he just sitting on his gun? Like, this is my thing. Like, we just watched, what's the name? We Own the City. Mm -hmm. You know how feds get down when they know they did some obvious bullshit. Oh, yeah, they're going to back each other up. Even, like, the scene where the, they went through that dude's car, banged him on the head, 
made that lady crash and her husband died. And they yep. was like, well, we don't find nothing on dude. They had that crooked cop come and just say he just threw a gun. Mm -hmm. That whole gun task force. That was, was a true story. You know what I'm saying? For things that happen a lot. This is what I'll say. I'll say my take. I'll let you, I want to kind of let you rock um, about this situation. The I, I had just posted that thread on Twitter about Tasmania, which is the island where the original Tasmanians that lived there yeah. um, were literally all killed off by Europeans that came over. The dude name, his last name was Tasman. So Tasmania is literally named after him. He named it after himself. But um, Tasman and his, and his crew is a, crew, a group of white people that came and just killed every single one of them. There's 1% of Tasmania, of the original Tasmanian left, and they're by way of the women that were raped by the people that came over there that had children, so that people that have a mix of that. But the whole civilization was wiped out. Um, but the reason why I say that is because they were marketed as savages. And they were, they were, basically they told the rest of the world that this was a group of savages that were violent on arrival, that were out of control. Yeah. And that the Tasmanians were crazy, and that is the reason why they defended themselves and had to get rid of them, right? Now, if you look at the Tasmanian devil cartoon, what is he? He's wild as fuck. He's incoherent. He's crazy. All he does is spin. He's stupid. He's out of control. And if you look at an original picture of a, Tas of a Tasmanian, it looks just like the Tasmanian devil. And they'll say, oh, it was made after the actual Tasmanian devil that you can find in uh all, Someone's in Australia. It's, it's like a little rodent type thing. But look at the cartoon. Look at the, what's the name? Damn, that's the crazy. But the reason why I say that is because in 2022, for some shit to happen and them say, oh, yeah, this happened because this, to me, that I'm just different. I look at shit me way too. different when me it too. comes to stuff like that. Like when people... And, and this is the thing, these are some of the things that are crazy to me about this situation, right? This, this young man was unarmed. Y'all shot him 60 times. It's just funny because people always say, oh, you, you making it a race thing. And I always, people always tell me that I, that I make it a race thing when really it just is. Yeah. On, um, where I had this right here, on July the 4th, Highland Park, um, the dude that, Shot up the um the uh she set the parade up behind the Park parade up. He shot and killed six people. They got him alive. The dude that shot up the the ten black folks in Buffalo. They got him alive. But you know what they gonna say? No, they didn't. The dude that shot up. Oh yeah, up, they did. They did. They got them alive. And this is my thing. Oh well, they surrender. Oh well, they weren't fleeing. Whatever. At the end of the day, these people committed some crazy ass murder and it's my thing i could see if they shot the dude in the back one time because they thought whatever having 13 people on one black dude shoot 90 times y'all didn't give a fuck about his life nope but y'all gave a fuck about the this person that killed all of these uh Bl black people in the supermarket y'all 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 cared about his life because i mean oh uh, you got a new uh Alarm track. Sorry about that, y'all. New alarm track. Didn't they tell me that they wanted the alarm to come back? Y'all ever heard the race about Wiz Khalifa? But you know what's crazy, T? It's just, we are just police different. That's 100. I'll take you to the, uh, and rest in peace to that brother. The, uh, the Highland Park thing. You heard about the dude in Highland Park? The dude, Cremo, who shot people off the roof like Remy from uh, High Learning? He literally went up on a roof, a Highland Park parade in... Um, Illinois, near Chicago, and you see how they're trying to like make it a Chicago thing because they're trying to make all the other the crime in Chicago with this one. But people, the people from there were saying, this is not Chicago. This is some completely different shit. And shout out to all of our listeners that live out there. But dude went on the roof and shot those people. And this is my thing. This dude, listen to this. Cremo has reportedly posted videos glorifying mass shootings for years. The videos are graphic, extreme, and shocking. He posted the photo of Lee Harvey Oswald, JFK's assassin, holding a rifle. He also called himself a rapper, and his music videos were celebrations of mass shootings. His most recent video reported 
um, reportedly shows him getting shot by cops after committing a mass murder. And so this is my thing. They just snatch 25 rappers from YSL on a RICO case for a bunch of crime and whatever. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got all this work on them. But this man has been posting about mass shootings for years. Yeah. Has reposted all this shit for years. But y'all snatched 32 YSL niggas up. But this motherfucker can just... He is free. And now look, now he kills six people. And then the same people that when it comes to the Jalen uh, Walker dude, some of the same people, I don't know if you saw some, some people getting uh, their tweets brought back up. But some of the same people that said, oh, well, he had a gun. Oh, yeah, well, he had a gun. Are the same people that are pro-gun, pro-Second Amendment. It's okay to have guns and conceal carry and whatever. They're these same pro-gun people look at this kid that died and said, yeah, well, if he had a gun on him, then he might have had intent. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have a gun. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You the same motherfucker that just said. So to me, I don't, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a non finish too soon for this young man. Um, but I'm fearful that nothing's going to happen because they're going to use these stories to say whatever. They're going to try and go in Jalen Walker's past and try to make him a villain. Yep. We don't know if he even had that gun. It's, it's, it's something that we need to say out there. Jalen Walker had zero criminal history. None. No misdemeanors. No nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know if he had a concealing carry. But then again, I don't even know if he had that gun. People yeah, are saying that Like the you said, we just watched We Own This City where they was planting guns on niggas. And my thing is, look, I'm not here to say that this man was a saint. I'm not. I, don't, I didn't know him. And look, some people say that the car that he was in was stolen. I don't know. Bottom line, we see 60 bullets put in him after a traffic violation. They didn't find him and, and he did something with that gun and then they chased him down. Y'all thought he shot out of his window. I guess he was shooting at somebody. I guess y'all caught him mid-drive-by or something because they weren't. You know what I'm saying? He shot out of his window. Okay. All right. At what? What is somebody shooting at their driver's side window going to do? He's in front of y'all. That's what I didn't get. What, is he, look, what was he supposedly shooting at? And look, is the window cracked? No. So I guess his window was rolled down. Did forensics find a shell in the car or in the street where he shot? And that's the thing. They're still, it's still under investigation. But look, my thing is this. If y'all have, have a gun and y'all got his... I really want people to look up that picture of, his, of, of the gun found in his car. Conveniently in the front seat. As if he's sitting on his gun. You know what I'm saying? It's like he stopped, put his gun conveniently. I'm telling you, the way the gun is next, right next to the clip, right next to his wedding ring. There's reports that the gun was initially found in the back seat. I don't know, but all I'm saying is I won't put it past the law enforcement to set shit up to get yourself oh, sure. out of shooting this man 60 times. You know right. what I'm saying? Because that looks like a fuck up. And oh shit, we're getting ready to go through the same thing that... We as a nation have went through with George Floyd, with Mike Brown. You cannot tell me that as a co police commissioner, you don't have the fear in your fucking heart that your people don't do no fucked up shit. Because it's like, oh shit, we about to have every motherfucking black person that's close by outside of our doors. Mm -hmm. You feel me? When you start bringing Sharpton and, and, and all of these figures to town, that shit don't look good. If you haven't seen We Own the City, it's on HBO. And it is a 100% true story. It is not fiction about the Baltimore Gun Task Force uh, team that literally all of them are in jail. Yep. The, and for years and up to and after Freddie Gray, all the way up to 2017, they didn't even get it convicted until 2017. But they went to jail for planting guns on people, excessive force, covering shit up. Like, it was wild shit. Hell yeah. Look, making mistakes that resulted in people's lives and trying to cover that shit up by saying, oh, well, we found this gun. Mm -hmm. Or oh, we found this one, dude. So and they were successful. it justifies everything. And they were. And that's why I'm saying, yo, I don't put it behind. All I'll say and finish it with this. 60 bullets? There's no way. There's no way anybody can justify shooting somebody unarmed 60 times. That's literally he got shot more than Alonzo from training day. Yeah. Like, literally... 
if he had went like this, I've seen niggas shooting at cops get shot with less bullets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you see him getting shot and his body rolling on the ground from just the force of the bullets, he gets shot and his body does like, his body is rolling like some GTA shit. You know how on GTA you keep shooting somebody and their body rolls? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, y'all was trying to kill dude for real and like that's not your job. I don't give oh, a yeah. fuck what you say. When saying. cops chase you, they get pissed off and then when they catch you, they like are aggressive. But that, and they have over 15 body cam footages. But it just, yeah, I could. I only looked at one. I looked at all 15. I looked at a 30 minute video and I watched every single time. There was even a cop that almost shot one of his own cops in the head because he was so pressed to get out and shoot. It's almost like everybody trying to get a lick. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make sure I shoot some rounds too. And it just started to look like, okay, would this be the case if this was a parkland shooter? You know what I'm saying? No. And y'all can't Park, say bro. that. It is. Or you can't always use the fact that this person gave up because we've seen plenty of times yep. where other races resist arrest and they don't get filled with 60 fucking bullets. All right, let's move on from this. Yeah, man. Rest in peace, Jalen Walker. And we just hope that we see some justice from this. Because look, mm -hmm. nobody's calling bro a saint. We don't know him. However, we're not going to do what everybody else is doing, which is just try to villainize dude. And make what they did okay. We just seen it too many times. Yeah. You think about your relative getting getting shot 60 times. And he was he maybe was in the wrong. 60 bullets? You would have a problem too. Stranger Things came back for the uh, finale. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it all week. It was actually last week, Friday. So I'm pretty sure hopefully everybody has seen it. Did you want to say spoilers or not? We, can, we doing spoilers. Okay. So skip forward about... We ain't going to be that long. Four minutes. Four? Yeah. Just skip forward a little bit. If you if you haven't seen Stranger Things, if you just now started watching it, just skip forward. Just skip this whole part. If you watch individual podcasts, skip to the next chapter. I think it was a successful season four. It was really just the last two episodes. Um, I'm not going to start with shit that I didn't like. Yeah. But for so far as the season four, I think season four was probably my favorite season. Same. Um, I also think it was the best season. Season four was, to me... Uh, even the way it was written up to the finale, mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved the whole uh, 001 is Vecna. He was the first, so it makes sense. He's behind the whole thing, and yeah. I loved that. I thought it was great. I even liked the different scenarios that each branch of characters was in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My movie suggestion of the week is... For the wait. No, I'm not saying what it is. Oh. I'm just saying... The reason why I picked that is because of the same reason why I like Game of Thrones, which is, which is the characters. I think a show is good when the characters are good and it feels like, oh, okay, yeah. Now we're here with these characters. And when we go away from them, I'm with more characters that I like. And I, I love the way Stranger Things always manages to split everybody up. And, we, and you stay on your toes each time because we're always going, damn, 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 damn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we got to come back. So yeah. it's like. The way that that season built up, season four, it was, it was definitely fire. I like how daring the Duffer Brothers were with, like, getting a, getting gritty with it and killing people for real. Like, we've seen people die, of course, but the whole, yeah, all your limbs break and your eyes bleed out. Yeah, that was crazy. Like, it was crazy. Like, it was wild. I told you, Stranger Things went from being something that your kid could watch to, yeah. I don't know. Some people, mamas can't watch that joint. The joint with the jaw breaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Wow. Shout out to my boy B. Mick from uh, BMF. Had him a nice little role in that joint. Like to see the young brother working. Nah, yeah, but, for sure. Uh, it was some bullshit this, this, with them last two episodes. I'm going to just say it. Hopper should be dead. Let's keep it all the way a thousand. Oh, that's Terrell's hot take. That is my hot take. Hopper should be dead. When she closed that thing and everybody else got obliterated, but he managed to. The force I guess he was, made it through the gate. Because remember, the gate was still closing at the end of that joint. You knew that he was coming back, though. By no, three. Terrence, when she blew that joint up. Yeah. And the people that were around it. Not even as close to it as Hopper's ass was. They fucking exploded. This motherfucker Hopper manages to make it to a door downstairs. Nah, he made it to the gate. 
What gate? He didn't go in the upside down. Nah, you know what? He didn't. You're right. He was laid down there, and then the Russians came and got him. That's Damn how he yeah. ended up in jail. Motherfucker should have been dead. That's one thing. I always thought he made it to that gate, but you're right. That was some bullshit. The whole he's alive thing. All right. And then my only ever hot take. You want you got a hot take before? Because my next hot take take is Max. My hot take for I mean for Hopper. I mean like to, like I like Terrell said, just to stay on pace with the with the with the show. I felt like my hot take for it is I was a little underwhelmed with the finale just because of mm-hmm. the build up of the story. It's almost like Jurassic Park building up this big story about this big ass dinosaur, and then we seeing this dinosaur fucking rain terror for the entire movie. And then in the end, it's like the dinosaur just goes somewhere else. And then we got to figure out on the next Jurassic Park what really is going to happen. Like there were people who were saying, oh, yeah, this was just a building block for next season. Or the finale was a building block for next season. And it's like, nah, for real. The whole season was a building block for next season. And it wasn't like a Game of Thrones type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Game of Thrones... Smack, smack the fuck out of you with every one of them seasons. And you're still co- fighting a common enemy every season. It's still, that's what I'm saying. Game of Thrones gave you a almost like a sub enemy, but we all know the Night King is on the way. Winter is coming was always that thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In this case, it would be like if Arya went and did what's name to the Night King, and then he disappeared, but then you just see that he's back. It'd be like, okay. My, my issue was the fact that my issue was not that they didn't kill Max. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I like the fact that Max actually survived. I like the fact that Max had an arm break, leg break. Of a leg break. Of a leg break. But it's just like they got her just in time. I did not like the fact that, oh, okay, so this whole we're going to kill Vecna. We're going to do this and we're going to kill Vecna. We're going to do this and we're going to get Vecna. So, like, y'all know what pissed me off at the end of the episode where Will's talking to Mike and he's like, we, we have to kill him. We have to kill him. It's like, okay, so we got to watch a whole other season for y'all to come up with a whole master plan on how to kill Vecna. And we just watched y'all w- watched it make it seem like this man is indestructible. I honestly feel like, shit, what else y'all going to do? Y'all went all the way. Y'all done got this man in the upside down. Eleven had him in the hand grip. Motherfucking, uh, y'all shot him, set him on fire. That didn't kill him. What y'all gonna do now? It's like, what are y'all gonna do? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, 11, season after season, we watch 11. It seems like give her fucking all. <laughs> <laughs> Only for, it's like, damn, they, uh, like, she's gonna even, like, a lot of people say that Vagna and her have to die together. That's what my boy Don said. The only way that 11's gonna have to go with him, type shit. It's like, damn, I always felt like, you know how Vecna was able to just do shit with his head? I'm like, all right, when can Eleven learn how to do some shit like that? Oh, we're going to have to go through a whole nother season of Eleven trying to figure out her powers again? Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, like, I'm still tuned in. I'm still tied in. I still love the characters, all of that. Let me tell you something. Max should be dead. It would have made the show way better. Look, we already lost um, Billy. Her brother. We could have just went ahead and put a cherry on top of the whole California chapter of Stranger Things. We still have the original four that we started with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We still got the, the three and 11. Like, everybody else made it. Hopper made it. Joyce made it. Nancy made it. Jonathan. We lost Eddie. You know what I'm saying? Which, he was one of the highlights of the show. I would have let him survive. I think people would have liked to see Eddie in season five. I would have loved to see Eddie in season but five. But Max wrote them fucking letters and it was a real farewell to die. You know yeah, what I'm like showing her and all of the the shots with her. And that's what I was gonna say. One thing I do want to say about Stranger Things, real quick, on why you on Max. Mm-hmm. Stranger Things shows y'all how to use music and cinema. When Max was going through that shit, and they was playing that Kate Bush song, mm-hmm. and you started to see all of the shit, I said, "This is fucking great." And I just knew mm-hmm. this is it for her. Like yep. she ain't gonna survive this shit. But like, and, but I'm not gonna I'm gonna lie to you. When I was watching that joint, when we was watching, and it just seemed like shit wasn't going well. Eleven was tied up by Vecna still. Mm-hmm. Max was done. When she went up in the air and that first bone broke, when I tell you my heart hurt so bad, I was like, damn, they couldn't save her. They couldn't save and her. And then look, I'm not even gonna lie to you. When Eleven broke out of the shit because of Mike's love. Mike's love. Yeah. And fucking 
stop this shit from happening. And Max was alive for a minute. And she was like, I can't feel anything. And then she just passed away. And my mother, my boy Lucas killed it. My boy Lucas killed that Destroyed shit. Destroyed that scene. Almost, that almost got me. That I, scene. I dropped the thug one. I'm going to keep it a Honda. I was Dolo. So I said, I'm feeling this emotion. <laughs> dropped the thug one because I said, Woo! damn, Max was jaw like one of my favorite characters for real. Yeah, man. So I was like, but damn, she gone. If she would have died in his arms like that, I'm cool. I'm they cool. They didn't have me fucked up until they did that bullshit. He's reading to her and she survived. Or the, no, that bullshit 11 can bring you back from the dead thing now. 11 can make a heartbeat beat. I didn't like that. This is what I didn't like. I said, you know what? This is just too much fan service. What I didn't like, y'all, me, I didn't like the two days later title card no 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 nah you fucking show us exactly what happened like i told you we don't get to see 11 wake up and hug mike after he just professes love to her we don't get to see her wake up in that pizza bathtub you know what i'm saying we don't get to see what happened with we don't get to see hopper and nancy uh, hopper and uh janice get on that fucking helicopter with them and say how did you do this like what happened type shit they uh, never even come back you know what i'm saying we don't get to see Dustin link back with all of his friends and talk about what happened with Eddie. We don't get to see none of that. It was just seems like they y'all were more focused on the kumbaya. Y'all were more focused in yep. show, on showing Robin and her little girlfriend, her their little thing. You know what I'm saying? Nancy is back with Jonathan after he was all in my man Steve face. Yeah. Please. Nancy, that's, that is just... But look, let me move the needle forward. Um, because... The show, the show I mean, was we, good. We still fuck with it. We still want to watch the next one in two years when it come out. Um, these guys are fucking assholes. <laughs> but the question that they were asking on the TL, and I said, I definitely want to talk about this um, with you because I feel like we might have different opinions, but we might be the same. Uh, could Lovecraft Country have been bigger and better than Stranger Things if they would have did um, four seasons or five seasons? No. And to me, the answer is no. No. Lovecraft As, Country would not have been able to make four seasons. What would it have been about, y'all? Y'all tell me in the comments right now. What was Lovecraft Country's next season going to be about? Letty? No, they actually said that the next season of Lovecraft was going to take place in a different space with a new group, and it was going to incorporate some of the old characters. No. No. I don't think they the would have been. The villain from Lovecraft Country died. Feel me? The mm. entire family that was doing that died. So you would have to introduce a new main character because the main character died, tick. And you have to introduce a brand new villain. No. But arguably, the magic, that dark magic in Lovecraft was the real, that darkness that they was using was real. Because think about it. In Stranger Things, you have the Mind Flare, you had the Demogorgon, then you had the Demodogs and the fucking whatever, and then you had... Yeah. Um, but your main character is Vecna. Your main character stayed alive, though. They, if they wanted to go for more seasons, and I said this when it ended, if they wanted to go for more seasons, Tick would have had to have found a way to survive so that we can bring back the momentum. No, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? The, the, name, of, the name Lovecraft Country isn't enough momentum to bring back, especially when you kill off the main character. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't cut from that Game of Thrones cloth where there was 20 characters... That we knew. So when we killed basically the main guy, we can keep it going. And it, it didn't have yeah. this comeback story where you're like, I want to see how this ends. It legit ended. It also didn't have the power of books. Successful books. Facts. Like, I feel like when people, when you use the word, could, have, could it have been bigger? It's like, yeah, was the show written extremely well? It was a great show? Yeah. But Stranger Things has the appeal of teenagers. It has mm -hmm. the appeal of every race. Yep. It has women. It has every group. They People love the show. You know what I'm saying? It's just too big of an audience. Lovecraft Country is rooted in civil rights, which a lot yep. of people are uncomfortable with. Um, it's a period piece. It's not as vast. Like you were saying, the Devil, like, the Devil Brothers knew that they were going to do four seasons of, and it was, this season going to be that, 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 that. They, they knew. Yeah. Lovecraft was not prepared to be bigger. That's no slight to it. We just need to keep it a hundred. Yeah, just because it was similar, I don't think that that means we can. 
Now, I'm not saying that there's nothing that they could have done. I'm just saying as a film company, it was like, yo, this show is ended. People were saying HBO ended it because it was black and they know we liked it. No, nah, I don't agree with that. Not, I don't think they ended it because it was a black show, y'all. We'll be the first to call them out if they did. We will be the first ones. We will be the first ones to call it bullshit, but low key, I was satisfied with it being a limited series and the way that it ended, I felt like, yo, damn, that was a hell of a limited series. Yes. That's like saying we want we own the city to come back. It's over. I guess yeah. you could do something <laughs> different, but it's it's over with. Like, and I don't mm-hmm. wanna see, and let me tell you, this is where filmmakers go wrong. Bringing shit back because this one made a lot of money and had a lot of momentum and everybody liked it. So we're gonna bring back the next season and it's trash. Mm-hmm. Look what happened with um Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. They once had an idea to keep doing The Walking Dead forever, that same cast forever. As many seasons, they would say, we want to be soap opera ass, where we go 30 years. That shit started getting ridiculous. It's like, Look at Transformers. Mm-hmm. Steven Spielberg told Michael Bay, it's a fun fact, I don't know if y'all know this, Steven Spielberg told Michael Bay when Michael Bay signed on to do the first Transformers, don't do more than three. This is coming from Spielberg, yeah. I'm telling you as somebody that could tell you, just don't do more than three. I think it'll be great. Don't do more than three. After he said the first one made a billion dollars. Second one made a billion dollars. Third one made two billion dollars. So it's like, when they called me for four, I had to do it. And it's the same and thing then, with Fast, five, fast, fear, fast just, and Furious. You start losing. The creativity is gone, and now it's just, what fun thing can we do on camera? To get yeah, how do we get people back? How do we butts and seats? That's probably one of the worst the yeah. fast series. But you know what? I'm not gonna lie, it's a fun movie night date for it you is, and, and that's why people starting to make it. But when we start talking about quality, that's when we start having a different conversation. Okay, yeah, it was fun, but look, even you didn't have fun watching this last Jurassic Park joint. I did not. Did you see what James Cameron said about the new Avatar: Way of Water? Mm mm. He said that the so he said he wasn't going to direct it. The fourth one, I saw he said that. Mm-hmm. But basically, Avatar: Way of the Water is coming in around a three-hour runtime. Goddamn! James, All right, bet I'm with it. James Cameron said, um, "I don't want anybody whining about length when they sit and binge watch television for eight hours." I'm with him. He said, "I can almost write this part of the review: the anti, the uh, the the agonizingly long." Three hour movie. It's like, give me a break. I watch my kid. He's like, basically, he doesn't like the fact. He said, I watch my kids sit and do five one hour episodes in a row. Yeah. And I get that. But you putting motherfuckers in a theater for three hours. Now, this is the thing. When you go to a, um, a first season of a show premiere, yeah. they'll show you the whole show. You'll sit through all of the episodes of the first season. Or. The no, first, you don't. You sit to the first episode. The first episode or the first three episodes, depending on how it is. Because if it come out on Netflix, if it's coming out on Netflix, they might show you the first three episodes. Oh, damn, yeah. But it, it all depends on what you want to do. So it's uh, basically, if you go to Cannes Film Festival, you're going to sit there all fucking day. Nah, yeah. So I get it. But at the same time, James Cameron, motherfuckers be having to use the bathroom. Man, Marty did it with The Irishman. Irishman was three hours and twenty. But that was a minutes. Netflix. That was only on Netflix. But I was gonna say, Marty put that movie. Irishman was in select theaters. It wasn't a theatric release. It was definitely a Netflix release. But Marty also had it set up to where if you wanted to see it in theaters, you could. I feel like if if Cameron is putting there, if if it's gonna be a movie theater thing, yeah, it's gonna be people that don't like to see it. But like, I you're not gonna hear me complain about that. I'm a fan of the art. If it's a good three hours, I won't yeah. watch it. Back. I'm not, not going to be like, all right, what the fuck is this? Imagine if that joint is epic and it's three hours. Yeah. What was Avengers? Two hours and some change, right? Yeah. Shit was great every minute of it. What was Endgame's runtime? Uh, and what's the name was um, two hours and 30 minutes? Infinity War. Uh, the Batman. See? Batman was 2.30. Good movies that have... I think good movies... <laughs> Endgame was three hours. See? <laughs> Endgame was three hours long. People will go to the theaters and see that. I remember it. I remember we went and saw it, and we was like, damn, it's 9. We're not going to leave until 12. Yeah. Well, it was 11. We ain't leaving until like 1, 30, some shit. I just recently watched Endgame again, and it did not feel that long. And that is the thing. Remember I told you I watched The Irishman. I've watched it a couple times. It doesn't feel like I'm watching it that long, because look at it. It is true what he's saying about how when you watch a show and you watch three episodes. I watched three episodes of Squid Game. Random, y'all. I'm rewatching it. But 
That's three hours. Yeah. And it does not feel like it. It does not feel like it at all. I watched Usher's Tiny Desk, uh, NPR. It was fire. It was amazing. That Usher he video was going everywhere of him saying, watch this. And I thought when I watched it, I was like, this is actually funny. Like, uh -huh. it, was, it was funny. It wasn't like a, he was doing this. It was like a funny thing. It's crazy to see that clip going everywhere. But I was telling Terrell, Usher snapped it. I think he, he put a it. hush to all of the verses talk about Breezy. You don't want to smoke with that man. Usher really did his fucking thing on that NPR Tiny Desk. I fucking loved it. If you haven't seen it, search NPR Usher Tiny Desk. You'll be in for a 27-minute treat. It's great. I thought it was great. But y'all really just are annoying. I swear, Usher fans are so old and annoying. And I'm normally the old head. But Usher fans are irritating as fuck. Number one, this... Ter I did not bring this up so you can start a Chris Brown versus Usher. This no. man went up there and played like six tracks. And my way is not a point against Chris Brown. I'm sorry. It's not. My way, my way. That song is a great song. Breezy, yeah. you're not beating Breezy with my way. I'm sorry. He Them other songs, yeah. They said the same thing about Mario and Omarion, Chris, didn't they? Chris Brown is not Omarion or Mario. We thought the same thing about Omarion. We didn't. We thought versus Mario. Mario, you're not playing that, and it's going to be a point. But Mario was singing certain songs, yeah. and he was just killing it. And it was like, damn, low-key, that's a point for Mario against Bria's fucking interlude. If you know Chris Brown go up there and play, if Chris Brown did a tiny desk, I'm not even gonna play this. So no, don't play no music, bro. So don't play no if, music. If, 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 if he go up there, that's it. It will be fire. And this is the reason why if, I brought it up. Because I did not bring this up to do Usher versus Breezy. I just said that he put a hush to all of that noise because he did. That's nobody's false. talking about Breezy versus Usher no more. We're just they talking are. about how Usher is. We just a talked about it on Drink Champs. Chris because Brown Breezy said he was do on it. there. Because but that's been talked. They were trying to get him to do it with Drizzy. Drizzy. <laughs> that would be good. Chris Brown versus Drake would be good because it's the same generation. They do make different music a little bit, but bro, I only, they can finish the drink with no guidance. I only brought this up to make a very, very, very controversial hot take that might get me in some hot water. What? About Breezy? No. About Usher? It's about Tiny Desk. I know everything that's happened. Everything that's happened, yeah, I'm with y'all. However, the one artist that I just for some reason was like, damn, if this man did a, a tiny desk, it would be fire. Who you think I'm talking about? Who knows? I, can, I don't know with you anymore. This is going to get me in trouble. R. Kelly. Terrence, we just talked about that man going away for 30 years. And that's why, we can get, that's why I can get away from saying this. He's already going away for 30 years. <laughs> He's going away 30 years for shit that he did, was fucked up. But if that man did an NPR tiny desk, bro, it would be fire. You know what I thought he was, what he would start with? I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this. We can't talk about this. You can talk about this off here. Nah, <laughs> fuck that. We can. Like, I'm not going to get, like, I look. I'm not with the crowd of people that say, yes, yeah, not fucking with R. Kelly's music was easy. Yeah, it's easy. Fuck his music. There's people who are saying his music wasn't good anyway. I'm not going to live an unrealistic life. I understand what the man did. It's fucked up. But look, that's like saying the Cosby show is a trash show anyway because we know what Bill Cosby did now. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's yeah, be, but let's it's be also careful. Not the R. Kelly has some terrible songs out there that Mike does make you uncomfortable because he got some songs like Take, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it seems like you're ready. Right. It's like, okay, I get it. Like, it's horrible. It's horrible. But like, I'm not somebody that diminishes the art. You know that. This is my thing. Uh, Birth of a Nation. You feel me? As horrible of a movie that is, and as horrible as a depiction of that is, they still showed us that in film school, right? Because they're able to look past the bullshit with they shit and see that this was true. It, was, it is a big part of film history. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're able That's to look true. past all the bullshit with that. That oh, film well, got people killed. <laughs> yeah. That film literally got mil like not hundreds, hundreds of people. Hundreds of thousands. Thousands of, thousands yep. of people killed. Mm -hmm. That film. But they showed us that in film school. All black asses, me, you, man, Deisha, Jerry, Ashley, we all sitting there watching that bullshit. Yep. So my thing is there. Only we are only going to say that. I, I, that's actually a good point. I don't think R. Kelly's music is so bad to end. Can y'all imagine that tiny death starting with look? 
Bounce, 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 bounce. They remix to ignition. I'm not trying to be rude. Hey, my girl, I'm feeling good. I'm that with you. Be fire. I'm with you. That'll be fire. I'm, I'm with sorry. You. I understand what R. Kelly did is fucked up, but I'm not afraid to say that that man's music is definitely still like this. The remix to up. ignition. Can you imagine I, a tiny desk? They would kill that shit. Oh. You know who would kill a tiny desk? Christopher Maurice Brown. And I think he should do it next because Christopher all, Maurice Brown. Chris Brown. Because people are like, yeah, Chris would have to go up there and try to dance. Off his nuts. Look, they would, look people are saying Chris would be, have to go up there to dance to hit those notes. Y'all got him way fucked up. Yeah, y'all got Breezy fucked up. Breezy can definitely do a tiny dance. That would be, that'd be a match. And doesn't have to do any dance songs. Nope. JT, I don't know if he's done a tiny desk. Oh, Justin yeah. Timberlake, he need to do one. Uh, Gunna. Yes. Free Free time. Time. Yeah. Uh, we saw Young Thug's joint, and that joint is surreal as fuck to look, look at now. Yo, go listen to Dropping Jewels by Young Thug. That video was going around Twitter. Go listen to Dropping Jewels by Young Thug. It's surreal as fuck to listen to now. That's a little doom, doom, doom. It's like a, uh, a slow joint. Is it from his newest album? Yes. Okay. But, uh... Oh my goodness. You know who else Him? we need? Jill Scott. We need a tiny Jill desk. Jill Scott, tiny desk. Um, can we get a can we get a Who's your who's your favorite tiny desk um that you've seen? One or one of your favorites? Y'all gonna call me, y'all gonna say it's recency bias? Usher. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Anderson Pack joint. What's an underrated one? Underrated one? Bro, I haven't watched that many of them. Man, you have so much greatness that you can go and watch. Underrated Tiny Desk performances, Meg Thee Stallion. She killed her Saw joint. Saw Meg Thee Stallion's joint. Wale has one of my favorite joints and T-Pain. Oh, my God. Yeah, I need to go and check. I need to go brush yeah. up on them joints. But, like, I started, I watched that Usher joint, and I'm saying, damn, this is the music that I just, like, grew up on. Yeah. I, it was fucked up. I shouldn't have brought up that R. Kelly joint. If I made anybody feel uncomfortable about that, I'm sorry. <laughs> However, my God. That's, like... The, the breezy up. talk is in hush. It's, like, it's the same thing with like Kevin Spacey. You can't fuck with. You can't say, "Oh, my favorite movie is this." Kevin Spacey, J. Cole. Like, need we to do a tiny all desk. loved House of Cards, but we can't say shit about it because Kevin Spacey was on some bullshit. You know, he was on some bullshit. We always got to say them first couple seasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> J. Cole need to do a tiny desk. He would do a tiny desk. Would be fire. Do before the intro. Yes. Or too deep for the intro. And then he he needed he do the uh, the Erykah Badu joint. I'm in the world. Uh, have Eric oh, that web with you. Great. Yes, that would be fire. Look, I watched the Jay Z B sides joint, right? Do Love Yours Live, y'all? Fire. I was watching Jay Z B sides performance from 2013. That video love has it. like 100 million views. I love it. On YouTube, the nigga recorded yeah, it. Look, I'm trying to go to sleep. I'm watching this joint. I'm trying to go to sleep. It goes, look. Dun, dun, dun. Don't. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I said, oh, Freaks shit. Watching, nigga. I'm sitting up at 3 a.m. like, <laughs> if I shoot you, you brainless. If you shoot me, I'm fa you famous. What's, What's a, a nigga, nigga to do when the streets is watching? This is why you can't beat that man. Because once that starts, once that starts, you could have played your you biggest. Right point <laughs> man. Y'all, we and me and Terrence got some real special videos coming. Yeah, for sure. We'll say that. And I know y'all probably getting sick of us, but we about to hop in that lane real quick. I'm on the ocean. I'm, I'm in, in heaven. heaven. Yachting. Ocean's, Ocean's 11. That first verse is my favorite Jay-Z first verse of all time. We know, Terrell. We know. All right, fuck you. Let me ask you this. Um, fuck, boy. Nigga look like he about to do a fresh set of goblet squats. Fuck out of here, boy. Nigga look like he about to go to do, do some RDLs. Okay, boy, you look like you do shrooms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Um, movie, want, knock out movie suggestion of the week? Yes, sir. Uh, my movie suggestion of the week, want to send an RIP up to James Cann, a certified legend in the film world. Um... Man, I should pick Misery, but I'm going with Godfather. The first Godfather, hot-headed Sonny Santino. It, 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 what? This is the fourth week in a row Terrell has not had a yeah, movie suggestion of the week. Of the week. We just, during this podcast, said R.I.P. James came before Yeah, but podcast. I said, you but know what? I, that's your, but I'm scrapping anything that I was thinking about before. And I'm going with The Godfather. You can find it on Paramount+. Plus. I bet he doesn't know where he can stream his. I bet I got to look it up. Y'all know I know my, my movie suggestion. You can only find it on Paramount+, Plus right now. But it's worth going and hunting it down. It's one of the best movies of all time. 1972. Francis Ford Coppola. Marlon Brando put on a uh, fucking clinic. And James Cannon is in it. So 
or go watch Misery. Amazing movie, Godfather. I love Misery. it. I watched Godfather easily like 20 times in a row back in like 2016 or something like that. I went through a Godfather phase. I got the book by Mario Puzo. I used to walk around with it. I used to have a picture on my uh, IG when I did this movement watch ad. I don't know who's an OG following of mine. Remember, I had the Mario Puzo Godfather book. I actually read that book. That book you was actually... You did not! You like LeBron! Look, Terrell, that... you're not doing this to me and you're starting to piss me off. Very... I read the entire fucking book. Fuck you. Very smart man. <laughs> Terrell, you about to piss me off because I really read that book. And you just trying to be on joke time. Fuck you. I read the whole book. And you want to know how I know I read the book? Because the book's layout is completely different from the movie. I bet you didn't know that. So shut your ass up. <laughs> Read the book. Go ahead. <laughs> by Mario Puzo. You don't even know the original. You probably didn't even know the original. I did the know movie. it. You just watched the movie. I you did, hop on I ass I did nigga. know it was. I'm also a film major. I'm not a read major. Yeah, but guess what? You didn't know who wrote the movie until me. Fuck out of here, boy. I had to help the nigga out. That's not true. I've been knew that. We found out together when we went to film We didn't school. find out I together. I also saw Godfather before you. Fact. Doesn't matter. I read the book. Fuck you talking about, nigga. You don't Ooh, even have the information that I have. You're a nerd. You don't even have the information that I have on that, on that story. Oh, because in this scene, he actually... Right. Fuck out of here, boy. Anyway. <laughs> you like the annoying ass motherfuckers that read the Game of Thrones book and that was like, watch or just keep watching. Shut your nerdy ass up, boy. You happy as shit you read the thick ass book. Y'all see the hatred? Fuck out of here. We trying to watch. So you see the y'all see the hatred? He's mad because I read the book and he didn't. I'm That's all that all. is. This nigga read it on some LeBron shit. He's mad and look, he's just like, he's not reading it. He's mad. I know I Terrence and I be seeing this motherfucker. I never seen him at the end My of the book. My favorite chapter is when, like you said, Sonny loses his mind. If you read the book, you'll understand that the book is laid out completely different. That's all I have to say. And I read the entire book. Fuck you. <laughs> anyway, my movie suggestion of the week. And the reason why I picked my movie suggestion of the week, a lot of y'all might have seen this movie. It is on Netflix. It's been on Netflix for like the past month. The Players Club, directed by Ice Cube. Yes, sir. If you've seen it already, I want you to sit back down and rewatch it. And I want you to pay attention to what Ice Cube does. Mind you, this film is directed by Ice Cube, right? Mm -hmm. I want y'all to go and look at the way that Ice Cube builds his characters. One of my favorite movies, I'm not going to say is Players Club, but Players Club does something that I absolutely love, which is the way that it builds its, character, uh, its characters and the way that these characters can move through different settings and remain who they are. Specifically, look at Lisa Ray's character. Look at uh, Lisa Ray's cousin, Mia. It's not Mia. Mia. No, it's or well, it's Mia from Best Man, but her name in the joint is Ebony. Yeah, Ebony. Look at Ronnie. Look at uh, what was the other ones? What was her friend name? Who Tricks? Tricks. Look at Ice Cube and his friend. Look at Dollar Bill. Look at Dollar Bill's uh, the dude he has, that he owes money to. Mm -hmm. Re rewatch this movie and just understand one of the greatest things about Ice Cube is Ice Cube gave a lot of the people, even people who were on, who weren't on, he gave them a space to be themselves and build their character. Are you even got Tiny Liston in that, who was the original Debo from Friday in that movie, and he still carries on a Debo esque role? And one of the things that I love about Ice Cube is Ice Cube gave young entertainers a place to get in and really showcase their talent and not just be in it. I was telling Terrell, we got a lot of young stars now, the Drewskis of the world, that you see them put in, in, inserted into certain things, but they're not really able to do what they really do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we just laughing because we know who he is and what he's done, but it's not really that funny. Like, you watch some of these influencers in movies, and it's like, okay, this is cool, but you're so much better than this. And mm -hmm. it's because Ice Cube, Ice Cube gives his characters the freedom to do exactly what they feel i've watched behind the scenes of like next friday where ice cube literally is just a guy that said yo we just gonna let y'all do what y'all do the reason why we love friday next friday a lot of the ice cube movies uh mm -hmm. friday after next friday after next um what's another ice cube movie a joint that he made or he's in a joint that he did well the you fridays got players club players club he has one or two more but the reason why I feel like his movies are so... Did he do Highlander or was that John? I think that's John. That's 100% John. But the reason why his movies are so polarizing are because of the characters. 
It's not about a crazy immaculate story. It's just the characters are just crazy. So that's my movie suggestion of the week, The Players Club. Fun fact about that movie is that it was made for, excuse me, it was made for five, only $5 million. And it grossed $23 million at the box office. Turn and so not. from then now... Yes, look, you got Jamie Foxx, you got Lisa Ray, you got an Ice Cube, you got Bernie, Bernie Mac. Mac, you got fucking, uh, I forget the dude's name that plays Ezel. But you know what I'm saying? Do you see how Ezel can go be a crackhead in, in next Friday? He can go and be this fake-ass bouncer, but he can still be a funny dude. Yeah. Like, me as a comedian or me as a creator, I can bring something to this character. I'm just not on this tight path with it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, shout out Ice Cube, man. A, a film legend. I look up to that man like no other. Made that transition. Nah, he 100% did and killed that shit. I'm telling you. Oh, shit, I hope this ain't still playing. Demarius Thomas, y'all know the Broncos wide receiver. We could definitely uh, talk about that, though. Was, yes. He was, they found C, grade 2 CTE in his brain. And uh, a bunch of players, Sua uh, Cravens, uh, Dez Bryant, it's a bunch of people that have been vocal about CTE and its effects, and they think the league need to do something about it, yeah. whatever. But my only thing is, I don't know, and a lot of people, I don't know what the league can do. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's Brian, it's like the NFL needs to be held accountable. What do they do? Do they, y'all signed up to play football. As much as I love Demarius Thomas, you know what I'm saying? I don't see a solve for that, at least. I mean, I think they've been a lot stricter with the penalties, and sometimes it's too strict. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the game of football is the 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 injury, it's like a 100% injury like change. You're going to get injured some way. I just don't see how they would stop people from getting CTE. I and honestly don't either. And look, these are the same people that'll sit there and say, man, that's bullshit when they throw flags for roughing the passer and... Oh, back in my day, you know, it's like a, such a split down the middle thing. Like, yeah, you got people who say, man, they playing soft, man. Football too soft. There was some NFL veteran that came out and said, I don't watch football. It's too soft now. And they was like, he's got too much CTE. That's why he can't. But it's not a funny thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's more like a, it's almost like the most harshest reality of partaking in, in, in being a part of that experience is that. Yeah. Now you ain't going to hear nobody playing basketball or no other sport going through that. You know, I want people who play hockey go through something, something like that, you know? Yeah, but... That's like an unspoken thing. Mm -hmm. But a, a rugby people got to have instant CTE. Them motherfuckers out there with no pads. Yeah, but I guess we just not as tapped into that league. And if it's not as much fucking... Go and... Well, you want a movie suggestion of the week? Go and watch the joint where Will Smith played the... Uh, concussion. Concussion. Yeah, that'll give you good insight. That'll give you real good insight on CTD and what happens to your brain. Yeah, it's like, that dream was crazy. I know some mamas out there that say, I'm, my son not playing no football. Yeah. Because if that's the long-term effects, I don't even want you to fall in love with it. I'd rather him go out there and play basketball. Play some b-ball. Play baseball. If this motherfucker Chet, uh, what's his name? Chet Hogan. His lanky ass can get in the league. He's a baller. Then you can make it. I think he's going to be a baller. I've never seen somebody in the NBA that looks like him. I'm sorry. Well, that's what they were they saying. They say he's a baller. I saw his ass getting bodied. Terrell and saw he that was the day. number one pick. Terrell, he was balling the night before. You didn't see that. I saw he had 23 points. And six blocks, he was balling that night. Watch. You can't judge a rookie. He's a rookie. Imagine I don't know. i just seen Zach Randolph play. Like, what you going to do when Zach Randolph get the ball and where bullies get bullied? He might get bullied for the first two years of his career. But I feel like... His potential, high. He, he watch, y'all see. I wish the Wizards would have got somebody like that. But I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not obsessed with who we got. All right, before we get out of here. You know what? He say, might be playing tonight. You want to say anything about LMA getting scooped up by your boy Jason Tatum? No. Y'all keep making it seem like I was going to be real hurt about that when, like, Ella fans knew. When Don't Fuck Me Up came out, I knew that was about Jason Tatum. Damn. That's why I was like, I love this song. The music. But and you, I can't cap she's, you know what I'm saying? I've always, you know what I'm saying, talked about Ella, but like, I hate how when... That's like Janet Jackson being your crush and then she gets with an NFL player and they're like, you're sick. I'm not about to get with Janet. I knew I wasn't going to get with her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know who y'all think I am. Ella May has never responded to a you post. Just, 
Never even looked at anything that I posted. Nah, but see, this never is, gave a fuck. This is what we didn't like. As a but I love the music. I'm as a fan, fan of the music first. As fans or as people in the in the whole nine community, we didn't like how you try to get on your platform and say, "Oh, I don't really care. I just care about the music." Do I not always say that I've been a fan of the music first? You only say that when people that you a fan of get on bullshit. You I did it only with Kanye. say that when people try to talk shit about oh LMA, oh yeah, you, yeah, you love LMA, you love LMA. I always say. Yeah, but I low key fuck with the music first. That's what I fucked with. That voice not never gonna fade. Look, uh, MJ in every way. You post now. I just don't fade away. This nigga knows he didn't only care about the music. I only cared about the music, Jarrell. No, you didn't. You was posting her on your story saying beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. She still is. Then as soon as she get in a relationship, no, all I care about was the music. Kanye, you was a Kanye stand. He started doing that bullshit. Still a Kanye fan. Mega hat. You were saying, look, uh, I'm a fan of music. Terrell, I was not a okay. Kanye stand where I'm getting the Yeezys. I was getting his shoes. I never owned a pair of Yeezys until two years ago. I was not a stand. I was a fan of the music. Do you know all of the words to the joint where he was like talking about the uh, the joint where the... You know that song he got where the doctor came up to him and asked for his autograph? And his mom was in the hospital. What song is that? It's called Roses. You know all the words of that song? No. You a liar? Yes, you do! Terrell, no, I don't. Oh, I can't even spit it right now. <sighs> He's a liar. Oh, I love that song, though. He's lying. He knows it word for word. That's why he could never say he wasn't going to stand. <laughs> Only what he said, what my stand. favorite part of that song was he'd be like, uh... Something t-shirts. Bitch, is you... What'd he say? Bitch, is you smoking reefer? Can't you see that we hurt and that's sweet, huh? That's home. We getting out of here, y'all. I'm about to go spin that joint back. <laughs> Stay safe, live heavy. Turn up, we at 108 weeks, 109. Yes, sir. Mimi, what's good?